Our next caller is Craig from California. Hey, what's up, Craig? How can we help you? Hey, gentlemen. How are you guys? It's great to hear you. Good. Yeah. Um, over, you know, 20 years ago, I'm 48. Over 20 years ago, I lost uh, over 100 pounds through like running, lifting weights, and eating correctly. And then that eating correctly kind of turned more into a uh, orthorexia eating pattern. And then uh, I also suffer from body dysmorphia. Now that I'm 48, I kind of want to focus on getting bigger and stronger. Obviously, I have a six-year-old daughter, and I need to uh, discourage her suitors by mm -hmm. having some <laughs> size on me. Yeah. <laughs> Go flare that chest. Uh, exactly. And I'd like to look like Sal in a wife beater, too, but I know that's impossible. Um, so yeah. um, Nobody can attain that. But, my, <laughs> but the two things that hold me back, I, uh, when I lift heavy, my joints start to hurt. Mm. And then my mind will just not let me eat enough calories to put on size. So how would you guys go about attacking those situations? Are, are you currently following any of the MAPS programs right now? Uh, no, I had uh, aesthetics just because I was more into aesthetics. Um, I was thinking about getting strong, um, but I just haven't got around to pulling the trigger yet. Yeah. What you're asking is a really, really uh, good question. Um, it, there's a lot – this is quite common. Not specifically what you're saying, but it's quite common for people to – fear going in one direction or another. You know, the, the person that was always skinny at one point may fear trying to get leaner and then vice versa, the person that dealt with maybe being overweight, having trouble with trying to bulk or build muscle. Orthorexia, by the way, or orthorexic type eating for the listener is this obsession with healthy eating. So it's a dysfunctional form of eating, but rather than restricting calories too much, like you would find with maybe anorexia or Reverse anorexia, which is you're always stuffing yourself, extremely prevalent in the bodybuilding. Yes, community. it's yeah. like you're. It's like everything has to be super healthy, structured, and perfect, and it can cause a lot of stress, um, and it can make eating um, a chore or stress on on the person's uh, psyche, um, and it is quite common. So here's how I always tackle this with clients: is I take the focus entirely off of aesthetics. I take the focus entirely off of the scale. So what I would say to you is I would. Take your scale and I would throw it in the closet or throw it away or put it in the garage. Don't weigh yourself at all. Also, don't don't flex in the mirror or sit and study your body in the mirror. Now, it's okay to look at yourself, of course, but try to avoid analyzing yourself and your body and the way it looks. First off, the way you perceive yourself can be a total lie, as evidenced by the times that I'm sure you've looked at pictures of yourself and said, wow, I look pretty good. But I remember at the time, I felt like I looked really bad. This happens to a lot of us. So I would avoid those things and focus entirely on performance, strength, right. stamina, mobility. Now, the second part of your question was the joint pain. When I lift heavy, my joints start to hurt. You can create more tension without adding weight on the body. So going heavy doesn't necessarily mean adding weight to the bar. It could mean slowing down. It can mean creating more intrinsic tension on the body. You know, I could, if I want to just push heavy weight, for example, and let's say I'm doing a, I don't know, an incline dumbbell press. I might grab, I might grab the 100 pound dumbbells and try to push them hard. I could get an equally challenging workout with 50 pound dumbbells if I try to make it harder myself intrinsically by slowing down, focusing on the squeeze, and literally the goal is, can I make this 50 pounds? feel like a hundred pounds. That's what I would recommend to someone like you. Rather than trying to add weight to the bar, can you make the weight feel heavier with your technique, form, and concentration? Your body doesn't really know the difference. Well, let's get into programming. I mean, what are you, uh, what are you leaning towards with him? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me would be anabolic. I asked a question too about if you were following one currently, because typically, um, when my joints start talking to me, it's when I when I'm actually not doing what I should be doing. It's when I'm overreaching and I'm like lifting too heavy too often, yeah. mm -hmm. and my programming is off. Uh, which even as long as we've been doing this, uh, all of us have still a tendency to do this. So, I think following something like a Maps anabolic protocol um, is ideal for you. The other program I may I could be convinced potentially by the other two guys to go is powerlift. Yeah. 
I actually think because that's kind of the direction I was going. But Sal brings up a point about you know joint pain, uh, and that was something where I was like, okay, well maybe even performance yeah. because it's not uh, specifically focused on um, you know hypertrophy and and, and uh, you know really like a physique type driven aesthetic uh, focus. So it's it's very much driven towards you know your movement quality, your your overall strength, uh, and, and two, it's addressing joint issues too uh, at the same time with the mobility set. So I think, in my opinion, I think, uh, you know, MAPS performance is probably, you know, the best because it's going to really shake up your mentality that you've been uh, driving so far. I agree 100%. I, MAPS performance is perfect. And focus, again, on can I make, if you're in a phase where it's low reps, like phase one and MAPS performance, for example, rather than as you feel yourself getting stronger thinking, oh, I think I can add 10 pounds, think to yourself, can I make the same reps I did last week feel harder? And how do I do that? Slower, squeeze, concentrate, technique, intrinsic tension. I mean, these are, I tell you what, if you look at some of the most successful bodybuilders uh, who've been training for decades, who compete into their 40s and 50s, what they do is that exactly. They'll use a light weight, but you can, when you watch them work out, like Vince Taylor was really good at this. It was, can I make this weight feel heavier? And it's a very effective technique, especially for longevity. It really reduces the risk of injury. And you're, again, your muscles really don't know the difference. Your body doesn't know the difference if you do it that way. So if we're, if we're going to lean towards performance, which I can totally get behind it for the reasons that you guys said, um, I'm actually even going to, and I, I know we normally would say, oh, focus on strength. and get, I'm actually going to say I wouldn't even worry too much about more weight going on the bar because right. there's still weight. technique. Yeah, technique. That, ex, that, that program, uh, you're going to do exercises you've probably never done before. Mm -hmm. And instead of when you feel like you're getting better at it, trying to add weight, um, I would be very meticulous about my movements. Can I make this even prettier? Like, there's some stability components in there, some multi-planar mm -hmm. movements in there. So when I'm doing these exercises that are challenging and unique that I've never done them before, and just because I've got a couple weeks in and I start doing them better, I wouldn't start adding load. I would actually just slow down, like the guy said, and try and make the my form perfect. I think that with the mobility yeah. sessions uh, in between the foundational days are going to benefit you tremendously. Yeah. Now, one more thing, Craig, just to help you out with this, because I know uh, when you do this process and you say, okay, I'm not going to weigh myself. I'm not going to flex in the mirror. When can I flex in the mirror? When can I check on my aesthetic performance? Do this, right? Follow MAPS performance. It'll give you about three months. In that three-month period, do what I'm talking about. At the end of three months, I want you to go ahead and flex, look in the mirror, weigh yourself. And I would bet you money that you'll be surprised yep. at the changes in your aesthetics at the end of three months. But the three-month period will at least allow you to break those chains a little bit. Now, when it comes to diet, it's the same thing. I want you to judge your diet based on your performance. So, oh, I'm not feeling as strong. Maybe I need more carbohydrates. Maybe I need more proteins. Or I'm feeling kind of sluggish. Maybe I overate or my digestion's a little off. So look at your food rather than from an aesthetic standpoint. Look at it from a performance standpoint. Oh, I could tell a difference in my performance based on how I ate yesterday or my digestion feels real good or my inflammation. You know, you talked about your, your joints. This, you know, uh, you would encourage you to eat more well-cooked leafy greens, olive oil, fish. Um, you could also try supplementing with something called bromelain. You could take this a few times a day on an empty stomach. It's a very good natural anti-inflammatory, so uh, give that a shot. But take it on an empty stomach. Otherwise, if you take it with food, it acts more like a digestive enzyme. But give it three months, and even this might make it even more fun for you. Take a picture before of yourself, front, side, back, and then don't do shit in terms of looking at yourself and taking pictures until the end of three months where all you did was focus on performance. And I think you'll be pretty surprised. It's a nice byproduct. Yeah. By the way, do you have maps performance? No, I don't. Okay. We're going to send, we'll send that over to you. Oh man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A thousand times. Thank you. No problem, man. Good luck with that. So keep us posted. Can I take it? Can I take a second to thank you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Okay. So we lost our daughter seven years ago. And then my wife was battling cancer and I found you guys in like 2016. Mm. And honestly, going back and listening to every, I've listened to every single episode. I, that's not hyperbole. I've listened to every single episode because I just needed a distraction from life. And your guys' banter and wit was so, so helpful in getting through a tough time. So 
Oh, and you guys ruined every other podcast for me, but <laughs> yeah. I can't listen to them now because you guys are so good. But I just want to thank you guys for everything you've done for just me in general. Hey, man, God wow. bless you. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm glad we could we, you could find value in our, our podcast. What a huge compliment, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, brother. God, bro, today's going to get me all teary-eyed and emotional I today. Know. Jesus, man. I know. You know, uh, it's... Um, got me a bit. I tell you what, um, fitness, of course, it's a tool like anything, so it can be abused. But when it's used the right way, because it's such a personal growth um, and present you know, method of being present, it really can be uh, an effective tool during challenging times. I do, not that it's a cure for anything, of course, but boy, does it uh, can it be very useful. So mm-hmm. I, I appreciate him saying that. I mean, I think the the the, the reasons why we do what we do is to really uh, help people in, in real ways. So well, these yeah. these are the people that, and you know, God gets me all emotional talking to both these back to back questions here that we got because this is who. I really feel like we were thinking about when we thought about this podcast, right? When we looked at the landscape on social yep. media and in podcasting, you know, a lot of a lot of fitness people were talking to other fitness people or other people yeah. that um, were like them. And there was this huge majority of normal ass people that have shit that happens in their life and you know their fitness goes to hell for a while because other major things happen and they are just trying to get back to feeling good and those are the clients that I remember training and helping and the conversation is so different than what I see all over the place it's not this this shit about uh you know breaking down the, the latest study on what what modality is better or macro counting or the the yeah. latest and greatest it's tool all irrelevant yeah it's all irrelevant and and these are the people man you help you help these people out and it's life changing so man what a what a cool uh what a cool person to talk both these these back to back that we we just had have been phenomenal and you know talk a little bit about the orthorexic or orthorexia that uh, he mentioned like this is uh, really, really common in the the bodybuilding it's space. Super prevalent in fitness. I, yeah, I didn't. I and I didn't mm-hmm. know that until until I got into it as heavy as I did with the competing. And man, um, it, it's these people that a lot of the uh, that we idolize and that are on magazine covers and we look up to and mm-hmm. aspire to be like. Many people have no idea that you know because they're sitting at this in the place of these two people right over 100 pounds overweight feel terrible so that and they look at this perfect body and this guy yep. who's got all great hair and it's you know he loves to exercise every day and they think they got it all together and what they don't realize is they're broken as fuck too they're hella broken that you just but just cuz they look good on the outside they they're they're there's missing out on a lot of life because they can't go fucking two hours without checking themselves in the mirror or weighing their food or well, figuring out what the next meal is going to be. Right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It's a front, and you know we've seen that, and that's been our biggest uh, motivation is to really just reconnect with people and show them that you know there's a way to do this in a healthy manner, and you can still attain a lot of really impressive. Uh, you, you know, goals that you set yourself out towards, but uh, doing it in a healthy way is everything. 